Here we'll look briefly at cell membrane proteins, their categories, and a few of their functions. But first, let's start by looking at the backbone of any membrane, which is the lipid bilayer. And the lipid bilayer is made up of phospholipids. These phospholipids are amphipathic molecules. That means that they have both a polar end and a nonpolar end. The polar ends, the phosphate heads, would face the aqueous environments of the extracellular fluid or the intracellular fluid for this cell membrane shown here. The fatty acid tails form what we refer to as a hydrophobic core of this lipid bilayer. Now we also have a significant fraction of cholesterol associated with this lipid bilayer. Cholesterol has a variety of functions, but a primary one would be regulation of membrane fluidity. And what we mean by that is the ease with which the phospholipid molecules themselves or the proteins embedded in it can move around within that lipid bilayer. Now, if we look at the cell membrane proteins, they fall into two main categories. They can be either integral, in which case they are continuously associated with the membrane, or they can be peripheral, in which case they kind of come and go. They are associated intermittently with the membrane. Down here at the bottom, we have a peripheral membrane protein, an enzyme regulator, that has come to activate, uh, through association, this integral membrane protein, which is an enzyme. Now, if we look at the integral category, these are, again, proteins that are continuously associated with the membrane, there's probably a broader category of functions there, one of which would be these glycoproteins associated with the formation of a glycocalyx. These are the carbohydrate groups that sort of protrude outward, all attached to this embedded protein component down here in the, in the lipid bilayer. Another group would be the lipid-anchored proteins. Uh, they would be demonstrated over here. Uh, G proteins would be a good example here. G proteins are proteins that are involved in signal transduction across the membrane, for instance, a hormone. Uh, that interacts with this cell would act through a receptor and a G protein to initiate an intracellular action, right? And so these lipid anchored proteins are literally tied to and have a lipid component that's embedded in that hydrophobic core. And then lastly, we have our, our transmembrane component of or class of proteins. These are proteins that are continuously associated, they're integral, but they also pass all the way through the lipid bilayer. The groups we would find here would be uh, proteins that are channels or carriers or transport proteins that are aiding and facilitating the movement of solutes from one side of the membrane to the other. 